All right, everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are gonna talk about random variables. Now, in the history of all things that are poorly named, I think random variables is probably one of the worst because random variable is actually not a variable at all. What a random variable is, is actually a mapping or a function. What I'm gonna say, if, random, if x is a random variable, it's a mapping from a sample space or from outcomes in a sample space to a measurable space. Now, m is usually the real numbers, but it doesn't have to be. I think that, I don't know if I can ever think of a time we haven't really used real numbers. Sometimes we use integers or things, but in the most case, we, we care about real numbers. And this really is going to help us in the continuous case when we have these sorts of things. Now, why is this important? Why do we care about random variables? Well, for instance, if we want to do any sort of math on, a, on deciding between probabilities, we need to be able to map them to numbers so we can actually do calculations. So when we think of a die, if I have like a, you know, a die here, you know, one, two, and one, two, three, what we're basically implicitly doing when we're trying to calculate probabilities of these things or, or measure things is we're mapping this picture to the number two. So we're kind of invoking a random variable in a certain case. And similarly, when we have a coin with heads and tails, we often have to assign these two numbers, like heads being minus one, tails being plus one, um, for things to actually work. A low voltage is a zero, a high voltage is a one. These are ways in which we try to convert basically outcomes that we care about into numbers so we can do some sort of um, manipulations on them. And by introducing random variables, we can actually define things like cumulative density functions and probability density functions. So let me go ahead and talk about the difference between these. So a cumulative density function or a CDF it's basically of a random variable. We often denote this as capital letter F of X of some variable X, which is going to be the number that we use in the mapping is just simply equal to the probability that my random variable takes on a number that's less than or equal to the value of X. Now, because it's a mapping of outcomes to numbers, we can actually now talk about integrating, we can talk about these other sorts of things. So this is, is pretty useful as well. And we also have what's called the PDF, or the probability density function, and we usually use lowercase f to do this. So capital X is, the, is usually how we represent random variables, is capital letters, and then little x is going to be some variable. And this is simply equal to the probability that x is exactly equal to x. Now, in most cases, we contain we like this version because if if x is a continuous variable or if this is a mapping to a measurable space that has continuous values rather than discrete values, what ends up happening is this is always going to be zero at any you know given point. So what matters is the length between them. So so let me give you an example. Um, really, really, this relationship here, the relationship is because basically. Um, P that X is less than or equal to little x is equal to the integral from minus infinity all the way up to little x of the probability that big X takes on the variable alpha, and this is going to be d alpha. And as a result, due to the fundamental theorem of calculus, um, d, d alpha of probability that X is less than or equal to alpha is simply equal to the probability that x takes on the value exactly equal to alpha. So this is kind of, we can go back and forth between PDF and CDF this way, of course, if it behaves very nicely. So let's consider the case of a dice roll. What we're gonna have is we're going to have our die and we wanna have, of course, our different outcomes that correspond to the numbers on the die. So my random variable is going to map each of these numbers with a specific number on our measurable set. So let's say this is R, this is our mapping. So this would be one, and this is of course this dot. So the random variable maps this number one to one, and we have of course two, and this is the side, the event where we have uh, two dots 
on top of the die, that corresponds to two. So this is what the random variable is doing, is mapping each of these to outcomes and so on and so forth. And as a result, oops, what we can do and then is say, what is the probability that I get any of these particular numbers? Now, this is a difficult thing to do. So let's go ahead and back up a second and do this in terms of the CDF first. So the random variables, once again, gonna map it to one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what we end up seeing here, and this, is, this would be the, the CDF, and this is going to be the PDF, the probability that we land on a number less than one is of course zero because can't get anything less than one. And the probability that you get a number less than or equal to six is going to be one. Because you know, the probability that you, you roll a number on the face of the die that's uh, less than or equal to you know, 20 is gonna be one because you can only go from one to six. And then what we see is we see these sort of punctuated places at one, you know, we basically increase this by one six at every step of the way. Oops, and then that actually, that need, need one more jump here. Yeah, like this. So I didn't draw this very well, but each of these is one six, two six, three six, et cetera. Now, what happens when you take the derivative here? Well, because this is a dis, continuous, or it is a continuous function, but because basically it, it's not a smooth function, it's not a differentiable function in this particular sense, often what we see is the difference between here and here, it's an infinite rate of change, and what you see are these delta functions here, this is basically the way we can represent it, like this, and this is a height of one six. Now, sometimes what people do is they introduce a probability mass function instead, where they use sums instead of integrals, that's fine, but it gets difficult because you can have random variables that are both discrete and continuous and it gets to be really annoying. So I like this way of doing it better. We can just basically assume that it has an infinitely tall height of basic with area, you know, basically from one from the minus side and one from the plus side of fx of alpha d alpha is basically equal to one six at pretty much as you take the limit, as you get closer and closer to this point. And similarly, our CDF, it's going to be extended like this. So once again, what the, what the random variable allows us to do is to map outcomes to numbers, which then now we can go ahead and do all of our nice numerical calculations with them, PDFs, CDFs, and the relationship. So hopefully you found this helpful. In the next video, we will probably talk about law of the unconscious statistician. Thanks for watching.